any advice that I would like to give to the final year students is try out everything, explore various areas. Once you get a list of options, once you get selected based on your performance, then decide which one to choose for, depending on your interest. But For the past year at Inside IIM, we have been conducting one-on-one -on -one career coaching sessions as counsel, short domain-specific courses as master classes, and university-affiliated certificate programs. Now, we are extremely excited to announce that we have a new home for all these highly rated programs in altuni.in. So, if you are looking to earn a high salary, get a promotion, switch jobs, click on the link in the description or just visit altuni.in. Thank you, enjoy the video and don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update. Cheers. I did my B.Tech in Aerospace Engineering at IIUST Shipkul and in the Department of Aerospace Engineering and I passed out in the year of 2019 and after graduating from IIUST, I joined IIC Bangalore as a doctoral student and presently I am working in the area of Astronomy and Astrophysics and I joined IIUST through the Prime Minister's Research Fellowship. So the primary conclusion that anybody faces during his or her final year is that whether to go for a placement or and do some job or whether to go for higher studies. This is the primary conclusion. I also faced some similar conclusion. And regarding that, aerospace engineering is a branch where it's actually a hard truth in India. The placement facilities right after the BTEC is not so good. So if you want to really go for some core job, you have to get a master's degree. So that's the first thing. Now, luckily, during my engineering placements, I got uh, placed into a company. I am not naming the company because I didn't join there. The package was also fair. So just uh, my plan was I would try all the things that are available to me. And after I get uh, selected, to lots of things I would then decide that which one should to finally opt. So right after I came to my final year, so whenever companies came, I also applied for placements. But the <laughs> it, it is a bit harsh that in aerospace engineering there was only one company that was with a decent package in which aerospace engineers from our institute were allowed to sit. So Luckily, I applied for that company and I got selected in that company. That was a good thing. But right after that, I my major plan was to pursue a career in research. And at that time, the Prime Minister's Research Fellowship was launched by the government of India. And till date, it is the most prestigious fellowship that is offered for doctoral studies by the government of India. So I applied for that and that was my first priority. I prepared very well for it and I got selected. So any advice that I would like to give to the final year students is try out everything, explore various areas. Once you get a list of options, once you get selected based on your performance, then decide which one to choose for, depending on your interest. So starting from the second year, first I worked at the structural analysis lab as an intern at the structural analysis lab of IIT Kanpur. So the internship experience was very good, but the thing I realized that uh, st aerospace structures is not my area. So then I started exploring more on flight dynamics and aircraft design, UAV design. So I did internships at various places. It's at the flight dynamics lab at IIT Kanpur. This is the largest flight uh, UAV designing lab in the country. Then also I decided, then also I realized that this is also not working out somehow. Maybe I can do it, but this is not which I am going to pursue in my career. Then after my third year, I got exposed to the area of fluid dynamics 
during my coursework and I also started to work on various projects in field mechanics at IIST as well as for different internships finally i realized somehow that fluid mechanics is the subject that i really enjoy but fluid mechanics just limited to aerodynamics is not that i want to do i want to broaden my broaden my ideas to astrophysical flows as well as other applications of fluid mechanics as well so i soon realized that i am more inclined towards pure sciences rather than just engineering sciences now this realization came when i just got promoted to my seventh semester at that time the pmrf applications were out in the probably in the month of august and many of my friends were applying and many of my college professors also encouraged me to apply for that particular when i made up my mind that i wanted to pursue a career in pure sciences and whenever somebody is planning for a phd it's not to focus on the institute but it's more important to focus on the research group or the advisor that the student is planning to join the brand value of the institute is important it's definitely important but is not it's not so important that you can just overlook the matter of uh, you can just compromise with your research group the brand value of the institute is on, only important if you are doing some uh, if you are just opting for some course degree like some btech degree or mtech degree whenever you are planning for some research degree the research group is more important so uh, in the application form once you are shortlisted for an interview the weightage is mostly on the interview mostly on the interview now let me just focus on the interview so in the interview what generally happens is they are going to grill you from the beginning in all your basic concepts in all the broad sub areas that's relevant to that particular discipline so if you are talking about a physics interview the most important thing is classical mechanics followed by uh, the most important areas are classical mechanics electromagnetic theory fluid mechanics these are the primary main areas quantum mechanics mathematics these are the primary main areas that that is relevant for for this uh, if somebody is applying for a physics interview so they are going to grill you in the basics of all these broad areas they are going to check whether you understand the concepts well or whether you have just uh just learned the subject or the skim the subjects through your coursework and you have just learned it for having good grades whether you understand them really well whether you are interested or not so that's the main thing and that's probably going to be of a weightage of 60% that's the most important thing next the weightage comes to your research proposal they are going to ask you thoroughly about your research proposal now the final thing that's important is your cv and your letter of recommendation that's let's say of 10% interest so uh, 10% weightage so your cv matters if you have a uh, more number of technical skills that relevant to your uh relevant to your area of work and finally your letter of recommendations are also somewhat important uh most of the cases all the recommendation letters are strong but it's also somewhat important so that has the least weightage so that's about the weightage classification the first thing uh, when you're planning to write a sop is be honest don't copy it from the internet because if you just google it in internet how to write a good sop you are going to get lots of sample sops and most of the people make a big mistake just by copying ideas from here so the first thing that uh, i prefer is whenever i write a sop i try to be honest as honest as i can secondly the second thing that one should mention is why they are planning after mentioning why they are planning to to a phd is why they are solely applying to the pmrs skill while writing a research proposal one thing one has to keep in mind is write a research proposal on a topic in which you have a good idea or rather on a topic in which you have a good experience so my research proposal was based on a project that i did in my pre final year and uh, it's a good thing that 
that project also led to a small conference paper at uh, good co- at a standard conference that is the food mechanics and food power conference which was an international conference at iit bombay so i primarily focused on that particular area and while writing a research proposal try to be as lucid and as possible try to be less technical and more lucid uh, and try to focus on exactly why what is your motivation for choosing this particular area and what are you briefly planning to do during your phd if you get selected to pmr the next thing that one needs to keep in mind is the letter of recommendation now while asking your professors for your letter of recommendation uh you think you need to keep in mind is you should get, you should ask for a recommendation from a person who should who, who is willing to give you a strong letter of recommendation so in pmrf a moderate or ordinary recommendation letter is not going to work because the competition is quite huge so you have to ask for a person who can give you a strong letter of recommendation preferably one of your project advisors uh it's only been a year at iis and in iisc when you enter as a doctoral student the, the first thing uh, that's unique about iisc is in other institutes like iits or isers uh, there are lots of undergraduate students and there are mostly undergraduate students but in iisc there are mostly doctoral students that's the main difference so it's primarily a research institute so once you get uh, admitted to iisc there is a thorough course curriculum that is known as the research training program so the good the an awesome thing about iisc is that uh, at iisc if you there is complete academic freedom the course structure is designed in such a way so that after passing that course you are going to learn something you are you, you are going to learn something so the course courses are designed mostly in an application oriented fashion and the weightage is a lots of weightage are given to assignments there are lots of course course projects and all and most of them are personalized and most of them cannot be found on any book most of the assignments or uh, projects cannot be found on any other research so you have to think it from your mind and you have to solve it this is the first thing and there are also instances where some of the assignment questions are directly directly uh, made by modifying recent research papers on that area so by doing a particular course you are going to gather some skill rather than just learning the subject there are also sometimes open book examinations so in those examinations you just bring all the books you can carry to the examination hall the instructor will give you a question paper you see the book and you try to answer the questions there are often open internet examinations where right? you can even google search <laughs> in the examination hall the research facilities at iisc is really world class so iisc you see it's tremendous funding for research so particularly in my area so my area of work requires huge computational resources and at iisc we have probably one of the fastest supercomputers in the country that is the shahastra so we have extremely well world class research facilities so that that provides an extremely well atmosphere so when you qualify for pmr if you are going to receive a monthly stipend of 70000 rupees which is going to increase after every one or two years and it is going to reach 80000 rupees in your final year apart from that you are going to have a research grant contingency of 2 lakhs every year using that you can purchase your laptop you can purchase relevant consumables you can purchase books you can even go for international conferences abroad you can have fun <laughs> but that should be limited to your research work there are lots of skills to learn uh, learn but the most important that i feel that any student who is aiming for a career in research as well as industry as well as in any other area is coding so there are lots of courses in coursera edx there are even lots of free youtube courses 
where one can learn coding and whenever somebody asks me about coding which language to learn i generally tell that learn one compiling language as i mentioned before in while answering some of the questions learn one of the compiling language which you are comfortable with preferably c or c++ or fortran and learn one scripting language by scripting language uh i mean to say which are the popular scripting language like python or uh python or matlab that 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 would be very good uh, a a very decent skill to learn for any student at this moment never focus completely on scoring which is the harsh truth in our country that just uh, just beginning from the plus 2 level we are so much obsessed with ranks we are so much obsessed with grades that we often just uh, leave the most important thing that's learning and th- just because of that most of the engineers or most of the graduates generally remain unemployed because they lack the real problem solving skills this is the harsh truth and you also get uh, more exposure in lots of different areas so this should be just my piece of advice and the final thing is you should enjoy whatever you are doing